guys, my hairstylist just walked in and fixed my hair. And it made me think about whether or not hair makes noise. So I'm going to mess it all up for her. What did that sound like, guys? <sighs> okay, can you come back in and fix it? you weren't allowed to travel anywhere other than communist countries. And so when the plane stopped to refuel in Canada, he got off and never got back on the plane and stayed in Toronto. And that's how we immigrated. And then my mom went, she got a, a visitor's visa to visit some family in Michigan with my brother and I. And then from Michigan, once we landed, we drove to the Canadian border at the Niagara Falls walked across the Niagara Falls with a six-year-old and a two-year-old in a suitcase. And that's all we had to our name when we arrived in Canada. And to represent Bulgaria, we have roses here that are the national flower of Bulgaria. Wow, these are so pretty. My precious. Just the microphones. <laughs> so, as I mentioned before, roses are the national flower of Bulgaria, and there are literally roses everywhere, and rose oils. It's my most distant and longest memory. They say that sense memory from all kinds of things, but for me, the sense of smell, and especially roses, remind me of my childhood in Bulgaria. We ended up actually going back to Bulgaria when I was 10 until I was 12, and I had to go back to school there. Not back to school, I had to go to school there for two years. But a little known fact, European education is far more advanced. education is far more advanced than North American education. So I was in grade three at the time when I went to Bulgaria and they actually bumped me back into grade one because the things that I was learning in grade three in North America, they were teaching the kids in grade one. So that was um, a real good confidence boost for me. Don't worry, I didn't have any residual trauma or anything. Having to go to school with six-year-olds when I was eight. <laughs> Maybe I am just ripping everything apart. Sound like 
like it's raining. It doesn't sound like there's a storm inside the studio right now. Can we get an umbrella? <laughs> I've made a mess, I'm sorry. <laughs> this was the first and last interview for Nina Dobra of NW Magazine. <laughs> Degrassi, the next generation. I was Everybody had major, major issues. So why would anyone go there? I'm surprised the school didn't get shut down after Jimmy got shot. Jimmy was played by Aubrey Graham, a.k.a. Drake. You've probably never heard of him. He's just some, he's a struggling rap artist that hasn't come out with any hits. I mean, I listen to his music, but I'm sure nobody else would be familiar with him. And to represent Degrassi, I'm going to play with some school. really lame non-star with high school locks. <laughs> it's a very sad interview for me. Okay, um, fun fact, the school colors for Degrassi were blue and yellow. Okay. This is a lot harder than 12, 14, 
excited as anyone does that I had to have my birthday in Las Vegas because I was finally legal to drink in the United States of America, even though in Canada the drinking age was 19, so I was legally able to drink there for two years already at that point. And let's be real, if the legal drinking age was 19 in Canada, I was I started at like 16 or 17, and because I'm So I was a seasoned drinker by the time my 21st came, but you wouldn't know it because it was a big night <laughs> and I flew my entire cast of the show from Atlanta to Las Vegas and we shot, because it's a vampire show, we shot into the evenings usually. We started at I think 5pm on the Friday night and we didn't wrap the show that night until 7am on Saturday. And our flight was at 8.30. The whole cast, the writers, everybody. Once we got on the plane, we'd been up all night, and we decided to stay up on the flight and start celebrating my birthday. By the time we landed, we got into a car, and we started the day celebration into the night. Stayed up that night as well. And all of us got back on a plane on Sunday, and then had to be on set Monday morning at 6 a.m., but it was okay because the creators were with us, so they couldn't get mad at us if we were tired the next day because they'd been out with us partying the night before. <laughs> and now, in honor of the Vampire Diaries, I'm going to play with some props. the song. Okay, so these are, I believe, real vampire dentures. Fun fact about vampire teeth is that you have to suck in your saliva a lot when they're in you can't properly close your mouth and your tongue doesn't fit in your mouth anymore. Another fun fact is that I am really afraid of blood. So you can imagine how enjoyable it was for me to work on a show for six years where I had to be around blood. Technically, I was being paid to have to be around blood, but I had to fight the urge. Sorry, I spit there for a second. I had to fight the urge of vomiting and fainting every single time I did a scene when there was blood involved. It was gross and really, really difficult for me. Just like wearing these teeth are right now and talking. sit before we had phones outside 
some of us had seen each other and um, it was really cool to see where everyone was in their life and their career and um, sort of catch up because we were kids, bright eyed kids with the world as our oyster when we started the show and now we were, now all of us are full fledged adults and it was really fun to get everybody together one last time and shoot in the real hallways where we shot over 10 years ago as kids some party red solo cups. These are the actual cups that we used in the music video that day. No, they're not. <laughs> Fun fact. There was a real bar set up at the music video shoot that day.
first couple of episodes, I was really scared. I haven't been this nervous in a really long time. Oh, that feels so good. So fam is a comedy. And it's shot in front of a live audience. And you shoot it kind of like a play. You have to memorize the whole script. And there's about 300 people in the audience. So if you make a mistake there to watch and see it. So there's a lot of pressure. I'm a perfectionist and I hate making mistakes, so I definitely was terrified. But what's odd to me, but kind of makes sense, I guess, is that the audience, oddly enough, prefers it when you make a mistake. They like seeing the mess-ups, and they laugh even harder when you screw up. Sonic journey. Everyone's probably asleep right now.